All right, guys, I've made a little visual representation of the three factors that go into growing plants in your tank. And I made this because I think it's really important to have a good understanding of how these three things uh, work together in order to have a successful tank. So we'll start off on the top with light. And the reason it's at the top is because it's the controlling factor. It's going to determine uh, the amount of CO2 and nutrients that your plants are going to need in order to thrive. Um, so if you have a lot of light, you're going to need to supplement with CO2 and a lot of fertilizers, otherwise you'll get algae and that sort of thing. You're going to have imbalances, and if you have low light, you probably won't need to inject any CO2. Uh, you'll, you'll get it through the atmosphere as it diffuses into the water at the surface, and you may not need to use many nutrients or uh, those many fertilizers. I always use uh, PAR ratings to measure uh, what light you're going to need. Just because I think it's one of the more accurate ways compared to some of the older methods like watts per gallon. And I know some companies provide this, um, provide these measurements for their lights on their websites. Or you can find them on forums where people have uh, measured them for you and posted that. So uh, definitely look this up if you're trying to figure out what light you're going to need. And I guess we'll go down to CO2. CO2 is not going to be um, required. If you have lower light, like I said before, it's going to be more of like a higher tire tech tank, uh, more maintenance, more growth. But it's always going to be beneficial to uh, add CO2, even if you have low light. Um, I always like reading Tom Barr's posts on his forums on uh, CO2. I think he has a good handle on um, how it affects things and when you should use it. But if you have a lot of CO2 or, or you're injecting a lot of CO2 into your tank it's going to require you to uh, also deal with some more nutrients or fertilizers into the water because your plants are going to want to use up more of the, the nutrients that are in the water faster. Uh, obviously you're going to get nutrients from the substrate or the water so mostly uh, a lot of plants I think through the substrate is the number one thing which is why dirt is really nice and uh, but you can get away with dosing into the water column using the, I use the estimated index method, but there, I know there's a lot of other methods out there that people use for uh, the dry fertilizers. Uh, but that works really well. And the whole theory behind this is just to max out your nutrients um, for the estimated index method that Tom Barr came up with pretty much. Uh, it's just to max out your nutrients so you don't have any uh, problems with uh, low potassium or low nitrate. It's always going to be there available for the plants, fuel for the plants to grow. The CO2 is going to uh, determine how many nutrients or how much nutrients the plants are going to require and light is going to control these two things. So that's just kind of how all of this works together. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about the video, please put them in the comments below and thanks for watching.